Yes. One question for Mr. Hijab. Uh, thank you. Great debate. Uh, Mr. Hijab. Sorry? Yes. Sorry? If, yes. Um, if the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, uses the Bible as his basis to validate his prophethood, especially in the words of Jesus Christ, where Jesus Christ said, I'm going to the Father and I'll send you a comforter, the spirit of truth, who will be with you and teach you into all truth. Like one of your famous apologists, uh, Ahmed Didat, refers to that scripture as the validation for Prophet Muhammad's um, like prophethood. Now, what do we make of what Jesus Christ said emphatically to his disciples that they should go and wait upon him in Jerusalem and then the spirit will come on them and in the book of Acts we witness a spectacle where the Holy Spirit comes to the disciple as clothing tongues on fire and we see a significant transformation from in the lives of the disciples and from there even the Roman government could not resist the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit at work in the disciples and over the years Christianity has spread not by sword but by the demonstration of the love power of the Holy Spirit. How do we reconcile these demonstrations of the Holy Spirit Thank in you. reference to uh, what Muhammad lot, said? Lot Thank you. In there. So, okay, Sorry, so there are a few points. First thing he said is about taking the Bible as an authority. Yes, the Quran says the Injil, the Torah, but the original one sent to Moses and Jesus. And the evidence of that is chapter 5, verse 46, where it talks about Qafayna and Ba'dihim bi Isa ibn Maryam. And then it goes, وَلْيَحْكُمْ أَهْلُ الْإِنْجِيلِ بِمَا أَنْدَرَ اللَّهُ فِي The lamb here is a lamb ta'liliya. Al-Qurtubi says this, meaning it goes back to the previous passage. And the next verse, chapter 5, verse 48, says, وَمُهَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ That the Quran is a guardian over the Bible. Yes, this book is a guardian over this. So it is an authority in as much as it does not contradict the Quran according to the Quran. Now that's point one. Point two about Christianity not being spread by the sword is a misreading of history. Actually, if you look at Constantine and the Theodosian Code, actually the only way Christianity spread through the Roman Empire was through the sword. Look at the uh, primary source material about the Theodosian Code. From Theodosian, Theodosius II, he enforced Nicene Trinitarianism by force, according to all of the historians, across the whole of the Roman Empire until the pagan religions of the Romans were completely dissipated. Not to mention, of course, colonialism. Not to mention, of course, the Spanish the, uh, co colonists. Not to mention, of course, one of the biggest, one of the biggest casualties in war in human history. Yes, one of the biggest was when the Spanish Empire and the French Empire and the British Empire spread it to your country in Africa. It spread it everywhere. Don't tell me it wasn't spread by the sword. Don't tell me it wasn't spread by the sword. What are you talking about? The difference between Islam and Christianity in this regard was that Islam spread organically, whereas Christianity required a man who was an empire at that time to spread it forcefully. We fought, as Muslims, the bigger enemy. You were the bigger enemy fighting the smaller people. That's the difference. Don't tell me about these things. This is a, don't misread history.